Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one New Huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Like sky rockets that shoot into the night, now you see them, now you don't. Yes, when you pour out a bowl full of swell-tasting Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice for breakfast, add milk or cream and your favorite fruit, now you see them, now you don't. So crisp, so tender, so tempting, they disappear in a flash. Mmm, mmm. For luscious, nut-like flavor, you just can't beat rice or wheat shot from guns. They're the one and only Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. And you get them only in the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. When Smokey Bates arrived in the Yukon following the first big rush for Klondike gold, he called at the barracks of the Northwest Mounted Police to inquire about a friend he had known in the States. He was interviewed by Sergeant Preston. I just arrived, Sergeant. Maybe you could give me some information. Gladly, if I can. What is it? Do you happen to know a fellow named Lane? Davy Lane? Does he have a son named Jimmy? Uh, yep, that's him. <laughs> I guess I'm in luck, huh? I know them both. Last time I saw them, they were prospecting for gold on Sulphur Creek. Hey, friends of yours? You bet they are. I haven't seen the little fella since his mother died. I see that would be, oh, six years ago, come August. Oh, well, then you'll hardly recognize him. He, he's a fine boy. He and my dog, King, are good friends. I can see how any boy would like a fine dog like yours. You won't find a better dog than the Yukon. You say Jimmy and his father are friends of yours? You bet they are. I taught the boy's father everything he knows about prospecting, and... Yes, before I left the States, I heard he'd come to the Yukon. So, naturally, I want to hunt him up for old times, sake. Well, I'm sure he and Jimmy will be glad to see you. If you'll tell me how I get to Sulphur Creek, I'll shove on, Sergeant. All right. Follow the trail north for about 50 miles. And take the... Three days later, Smokey Bates arrived on Sulphur Creek and began looking for his friend, Davy Lane. It was almost nightfall when he saw a cabin. As he approached, the door opened and a boy of nine appeared and shouted, Help! Hey! Hey, what's the matter, son? My father, he's sick. I think he's dying. Hey, I'll see about him, son. Where is he? As the old miner pushed into the darkened room of the cabin, he could barely see a form lying on a bunk in the corner. Hey, light the lamp, son. I can't see much of anything in here. Yes, sir. There. Now hold it close so as I can look at you, Dad. Davy. Davy Lane. You called his name. Do you know my dad? Yes, Jimmy, I know both of you. Your father was my best friend. Now be quiet while I look him over. Smokey Bates felt for the trace of a heartbeat, but he found none. He saw that his friend was dead. A few days later, Smokey Bates and Jimmy trudged through the snow to the village of Timberton and headed for the general store. Mr. Black owns the store. Yeah? Dad and I bought our supplies from him. Well, Jimmy, we'll go in and have a talk with Mr. Black. Maybe he's got the answer to what we want to know, eh? Here we are. I'll open the door. All right, go on in, Jimmy. Morning, Jimmy. Hello, Mr. Black. I'm right glad you came in, Jimmy. I was wanting to have a talk with you. A talk with me? About what, Mr. Black? About going to work in my store. You know, I grubstake your dad. Yes, I... I know you did. That grub steak must be paid off now that he's gone. You're a strong boy, big enough to work. 
going to be up to you to pay back what I let your dad have. Oh, I wouldn't mind working it out, Mr. Well, Edward. let me do the talking, Jimmy. All right, Smokey. Who are you, mister? Smokey Bates is the name. I was Dave Lane's friend. Now, let me tell you something about grub steaks. Not that you don't know already. What do you mean? A grub steak's not a loan. It's a gamble. You let Dave Lane have money and supplies to look for gold. It was agreed that if he found it, you'd both share 50-50. If he didn't find it, you'd lose a grub steak and Dave would be out his time and effort. You can't make anyone pay back anything. And this boy's not going to work to pay back anything. Get that straight, Mr. Black. How do you know that's what Dave Lane and I agreed to? After he died, Jimmy and I went through his things. We found the agreement. Here it is. That's what we came here to talk to you about. I won't talk to you about anything. I think you will. Take a look at this. Gold ore. That's right. Some of the richest I ever saw. Where'd you get it? Dave Lane found it. He didn't tell me he found gold. Where'd he find it? We don't know. You're lying. If he found it, you must know all about it. Uh, cool off, mister. Davy Lane died from the excitement of his discovery without telling where he found the ore. You grub staked him, and you would share 50-50 in anything he found. That's right. Now, if you take this grub stick agreement you wrote and strike out the name of Davy Lane and write in Jimmy Lane, I'll go find that mine for the two of you. Now, how's about it? What do you expect out of it, Mr. Bates? Nothing, nothing. Jimmy here was left without a penny. I want to see that he gets what's coming to him so he can go to school and get an education. If I find the gold, it's all yours and his. I see. Well, I'll change the contract on one condition. And what's that? I don't want to fall into the same trap twice. I might not be so lucky next time. What's the condition? We'll write in a clause saying that in the event of the death of one of us, the share of the deceased goes to the living partner. Is that agreeable? Well, yes, I think that's fair enough. What do you say, Jimmy? I don't understand these things, Smokey. Yeah. But if you say it's all right, it's all right. Then we'll draw up a new agreement now. Let's go into my office where I have a pen and paper. The new grubstick contract was drawn up and signed by Jason Black, the storekeeper, and Jimmy Lane. Smokey and Jimmy prepared to leave. Well, now everything's signed, Jimmy. We'll get back to Sulphur Creek and start looking for the gold. Eh? We'll need supplies. Uh, Here's the list I made up. Yeah, yeah, I almost forgot the supplies, Jimmy. See, uh, We'd better get some dynamite, too. May need it for blasting. Yeah, give me the list, and I'll get the stuff for you. You can sit here by the stove till I get it ready. Take your time, Mr. Black. We're in no hurry. All right. Smokey, do you think we can really find them? When Jason Black walked from his small office into the store, he saw two men leaning against the counter and decided to wait on them before starting to gather the supplies for Jimmy and Smokey. Morning, gents. What can I do for you? Hello, brother Jason. Eddie. Surprised to see me? Where'd you come from? I thought you... You were... thought I was in jail. Well, I'm not anymore. Jason, meet a friend of mine, Joe Fox. Howdy, Jason. Eddie told me about his brother. Yeah? Eddie, why did you come here? Law's looking for me and Joe. I figured you'd hide us for a spell. Eddie, I'll give you money, but I can't have you hanging around here. We don't need money. We need a place to stay, and this is it. We're staying whether you like it or not. And if you try any funny stuff, like tipping off the Mounties, I'll put a bullet through you. We're not joking, Jason. Huh. Second thought, I guess you can stay. Just came to me. Maybe I can make use of you. Make use of us? How do you mean? Never mind. I'll explain when the time comes. Now, the two of you get upstairs and keep out of sight. There's a stairway right over there. In the days that followed, old Smokey Bates and Jimmy Lane searched diligently along Sulphur Creek for the source of the gold Jimmy's father had found. As time dragged on, the search became more and more discouraging until the day they found a miner's pick lying on the ground. It stands. I've known anywhere. Yep, he must have left it here when he found the gold. Let's eh? start looking around, Smokey. Yep. Within five minutes, old Smokey saw marks of the pick on a rock ledge. <sighs> And then he found the rich vein of ah, gold. This is it, Jimmy. We found it. Oh, Whoopee! We're rich, Smokey. We're rich. <laughs> yep, I knew you'd do what I did. The said. old miner and boy were unaware that they were being watched by Eddie Black, brother of the storekeeper, and his companion, Joe Fox, 
who were a short distance away. Eddie, looks like they found it. That's all we want to know, Joe. What do we do now? Go down there and shoot them? No, that'd be plain murder. We've got to make it look like an accident. How can we do that? Uh, their cabin's up the valley a mile or so. Come on, Joe. I'll show you how to get rid of them so it will look accidental. Eddie and Joe found the cabin unlocked. And on entering it, Eddie began a search that soon disclosed what he wanted. It was dynamite, percussion caps, and a coil of fuse. As Joe Fox watched him, Eddie tied several sticks of dynamite into a bundle and fixed a percussion cap and fuse. Then he said, Now, we'll lift this floorboard that lays under the stove. Are you going to put the dynamite under it? Yeah, or it'll be out of sight. Now, I take the fuse... Run it up under the leg of the stove where it won't be seen. The way I'm beginning to understand. There. No one can see it now. Then I'll stick the end of the fuse up through the ash hopper of the stove like this. Hey, uh, better make sure there's no live coals in there. That fuse will catch fire. Fire's out. No danger now. There. It's all ready. Yeah, I get the idea. The old man and kid come in and build a fire in the stove. The fuse in the hopper catches fire, burns down to the percussion cap, and zowie, off goes the dynamite. Won't be enough of the cabin left to make toothpicks. It'll sure look like an accident. Right. Too. Well, let's clear out of here, Joe. Head back to town. My brother can't say we didn't take care of his dirty linen now. The old man and the kid out of the way, that gold mine goes to him. Hey, what's that? A dog. Someone's coming. Easy now, Joe. Not the old miner and the kid. They don't have a dog. But it's someone. Take it easy. Don't act suspicious. I'll get rid of them. Eddie and Joe had no time to look out the window to see who was coming. Almost instantly, the door opened. What? A Mountie. Sergeant Preston stood silhouetted in the light. Good morning. I expected to find friends of mine here. Friends? Oh, you mean Smokey Bates and Elaine Kid. Yes. Where are they? Uh, they're not around anymore. We, um... We bought the cabin from him. You did? When? About a month ago. Uh, right after the kid's father died. We haven't seen him since. I see. Well, perhaps I can learn their whereabouts from a storekeeper in Timberton. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Goodbye. Bye. Sergeant Preston had recognized the two men as wanted criminals. But while he talked to them, he saw that both kept their hands in the pockets of their parkas. He knew that each had a gun leveled at him, and that if he showed the slightest recognition, he would be killed. He pretended to believe their story and turned toward the door. The instant Preston turned his back, Eddie Black took the gun from his pocket and started to raise it to aiming level. <laughs> Sergeant Preston heard the great dog king snarl a warning, and with the agility of a mountain cat, he sprang aside as a shot rang out. You missed him. Get him, Joel. Get him. Sergeant Preston jerked his gun from the holster. King lunged at Eddie Black, knocking the outlaw off balance. But Joe Fox moved in, swinging the butt of his revolver at Sergeant Preston's head. The Mountie ducked, and with his free left hand, sent his fist smashing into the face of Fox, who fell sprawling, his gun clattering across the floor. Get this blood away. Get him away. Hold him, King. Hold Joe him. Fox tried to scramble to his feet and regain the gun, but the Mountie was faster. Picking it up, he whirled and shouted. Get your hands up. I quit. Get this dog off. Don't shoot. I quit. I King. Quit. Now, uh, Eddie Black and Joe Fox, I arrest you in the name of the Queen. You, you know us. Yes, I know you. Now I'm going to find out what you two are doing here. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Yes, everyone loves delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from gun. Take the rich man, for instance. He says, money can't buy a finer-tasting breakfast cereal. As for the poor man, listen to what he says. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice makes an economical deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. And the beggar man says, when it comes to a handout, make mine the cereal shot from guns. That nut-like flavor's terrific. No, take the thief. He's really not one at all. He's simply the fellow who loves to help himself to a second bowl full when nobody's looking. And naturally, Mom doesn't mind that one bit. And listen to what the doctor says. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nutritious. They furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're good for you. And the lawyer? I like the famous Quaker money back with a smile guarantee. It's on every single package. Last but not least, 
the Indian chief. Mm. Me trade in bow and arrow any day for gun that shoot Quaker puffed rice, Quaker puffed wheat. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Some mighty good reasons why they deserve top spot on your family breakfast table. I mean Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue. Though completely surprised to see Eddie Black and Joe Fox, both of whom were wanted by the law, Sergeant Preston took advantage of the surprise he had caused. After he disarmed them, Eddie Black said, Who told you where to find us? What makes you think anyone told me? You needn't stall with us. I know who did it. It was Eddie's brother. Shut up, Joe. I didn't trust him from the first time I saw him. I knew he'd have the law on us. Shut up, you fool. Monty's got us. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, Monty, let's shove off. No sense in hanging around here, arguing. Not so fast, Eddie. What were you and Joe doing here? We... We came to see Smokey Bates. That's the truth of it. Where is he? I don't know. He wasn't here when we arrived. Me and Joe were getting ready to leave when you came. What'd you come here to see him about? Nothing important. Anyway, now that you've arrested us, it's not important. I'm not so sure you're telling the truth. I think I'll have Smokey take a look at you. Maybe he can explain what you came for. Watch them, King. Uh, what are you going to do, Monty? Build a fire in the stove? What, build a fire? What? what for? We're not cold. Smokey Bates must be prospecting somewhere in the valley. If he sees smoke coming from his cabin, he'll come back to investigate. Oh, maybe we can find him ourselves. It's cold in here. I'll just touch a match to the stove, and I'll tell you two. If the smoke doesn't bring him, I'll go and look for him. But, but you... Get over there, both of you. Stand in that corner. Watch him, King, so they can't jump me while I build this fire. As Sergeant Preston prepared to light the fire, the prisoners exchanged glances. They knew that soon after the fire was started, there would be a devastating blast. Fear gripped the outlaws as the Mountie struck a match. The fire was going. There. As the Mountie got to his feet, a puff of smoke came from the ash hopper. The fuse to the dynamite was burning. <laughs> What's the matter, King? Sergeant Preston didn't realize what was happening, but Yukon King had smelled the acrid fumes of powder before. He forgot the prisoners. In a great bound, he leaped at the stove, and his great white fangs tore at the iron leg with a viciousness that amazed Sergeant Preston. Hey, King, what's the matter with you, fellas? Hey, run, Joe, run! Get out, Eddie, we'll all be killed! Stop! Hold her up, fire! As Eddie and Joe bolted for the door, Preston whipped out his six-gun. But before he could pull the trigger, the great dog King threw all of his weight against him in an effort to force him to the door in safety. King! Down, King! What's the matter, boy? You let him get away. Then Preston saw a thin stream of blue smoke curling out from under the leg of the stove and caught the scent of burning powder. Outside, boy! Smokey Bates and Jimmy Lane were picking at the gold-laden rock when the sound of the explosion came to their ears. Oh, golly, Smokey, what was that? Uh, explosion in the big one, Jimmy. There are no mines around here. Who'd be setting off a blast like that? Yeah, Jimmy, that explosion came from the direction of our cabin. Huh? Look back yonder. You see the dust rising over the trees? Golly, you're right. Maybe our dynamite exploded, eh? But I don't see how that could happen. We have the dynamite stored in the closet. Well, I can't see how it happened. But we've got to find out about it. Drop your tools and get us go, eh? Huh? All right, come on, Eddie, boy. Meanwhile, Eddie Black and Joe Fox were picking themselves up from the frozen ground to which they had been knocked by the blast. If they did, they looked back. The cabin... Eddie, the cabin's not there. It's gone. What'd you expect? There was enough dynamite in there to blow up a mountain. Yeah. Where's the mountain, Eddie? On the ground yonder where the dog is. See? Yeah, I see him now. Wonder how he got out. He was blown out by the blast, I guess. Must have reached the door when they started after us. We better make sure he's dead before we leave. Yeah. Yeah, if we had our guns, we could put a few bullets in him from here. Now the guns disappeared in the blast. We'd never find them. <laughs> Dog. But we got to make sure the Mountie's dead. Tell that to the dog. I mixed with that critter once today. It's enough for me. We'll head back to Timberton. No one but Jason knows we were here. I want to have a talk with him. You may be right about him sending the Mountie after us. Come on, let's go. As the two outlaws hurried back to Timberton, Smokey and Jimmy hurried to their cabin. Smokey, the cabin's gone. Yes, I figured it would be, Jimmy. Hurry. Hey, there's a dog. He yes. sees us. And Jimmy, there's a man lying on the ground. Yeah, I see him. I know that dog. It's King. 
Yes, and that man on the ground must be Sergeant Preston, eh? Yeah, that's right, it is. Looks like he was killed. <laughs> Take it easy, Jimmy, while I find out for sure. Help me lift him up, eh? Oh, oh. He's alive. Yeah, thank goodness. Sergeant Preston soon recovered consciousness, and Smokey Bates and Jimmy Lane plied him with questions. When his mind had cleared, he told them how he had come on Eddie Black and Joe Fox in the cabin. And then he asked, Why would they want to kill you, Smokey? Yeah, I don't know. I never saw him in my life. Neither did I. Who are they, Sergeant Preston? Outlaws, Jimmy. They broke out of prison recently, and we've yeah. been looking for them. Yeah. They knew the dynamite was in your cabin. They tried to persuade me not to build a fire on the stove, and they ran from the cabin at their first opportunity. It you mystifies me. I don't have an enemy in the world. Do you know a man named Black? You mean intimidated? Yes. Well, Jason Black is a storekeeper there. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. Why? He's Eddie Black's brother. Uh, his brother? Yes, I guess that's the brother Eddie was speaking about. I thought the brother had tipped me off where to find them. That means Jason Black knew they were here. Yes. Now I get it. Yes, sir, I see it all now. See what? Jason Black's Jimmy's grub sticker. If he killed Jimmy, and me, of course... The mine would belong to him. What is this? Well, it's this way. Jason Black drew up a grub stick. When Eddie and Joe reached the village, they took great care to see that no one observed them as they entered the rear door that opened into the office of Jason Black's store. Quietly, Eddie shut the door behind them. He's out front. Now we can get a couple of guns before we call him in. How we do that? He keeps him in his desk here. I saw some the other night. Yeah, three of them there. Give me one. There. Make sure it's loaded. All right. Eddie Black gave one gun to Joe Fox and pocketed another for himself. Then he took the third gun, emptied its chamber, and replaced it in the drawer. Now, if that brother of mine did try to double-cross us, I think you'll tip his hand. Call him in here. Yeah. Jason? Oh, Jason. Yeah? What? Eddie wants to talk to you. When the storekeeper entered the office, he sensed that something was wrong. What's wrong? The old man and the kid found the mine today. They found it? Where? West of their cabin, about a mile up Sulphur Creek. Did uh, you take care of them? Yeah. Just like you suggested I do it. To make it look like an accident. Good. But of course, I'll have to wait for proof that you did it before I carry out the agreement. Someone will report it soon. We don't want to wait. We want our money right now. That's right, Jason. There's a mommy in the woods, and we saw him. And we're clearing out now, so give us our cash. I see. Well, let me get the keys to my safe. Where are they? In the desk here. Right here. Stand where you are. What? Hey, what's the idea of drawing on us, Jason? Pulling a gun on your own brother. It's a double cross like I suspected. You don't think I'm fool enough to let you two live? You'd bleed me for the rest of my life. If both of you dead, that gold in Sulphur Creek will be mine. <laughs> All mine. I outguessed you, Jason. What do you mean? I emptied that gun before Joe called you in here. You lied. Pull the trigger. See if I lied. It's not loaded. No. But this one is. No. Oh! A double crosser. He got what was coming to him. Go in the store. Lock the front door while I go through the safe. Wait. Someone just came in the front door of the store. Yeah. Let's see who it is. Holy smoke, it's the Mountie. Get your hands up. Catch a gun, Joe. Before either man could shoot, Preston dropped to the floor. Shoot, Joe! And ducked behind the bulletproof log counter that ran along the east wall. <laughs> While Joe and Eddie fired from the protection of the little office, the Mountie crept forward, crouching. Our bullets won't go through those logs. He's getting closer all the time. A couple of seconds and he'll be near enough to fire right into this office. My gun's empty. That's my last shot. We gotta get away. Come on. Back door's unlocked, Joe. Let's run while we got the chance. Yeah. Get him, hey, look, it's Smokey in the door. Yeah. Take care of the dog, Eddie. I've got the old man. Right. Oh. Hey, get back. Sergeant Preston moved into the fray, his fist swinging, and Joe and Eddie soon realized for the second time that day that the Mountie was more than a match. Eddie was the first to go down under the sledgehammer blows of the Mountie, and a smash to the chin of Joe Fox sent him sprawling backward over his pal. Had enough? You win, Mountie. Easy, King. Easy, boy. I'll get to your feet and keep your hands up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, son. Murder's been done here. It's Jason Black. Yes, Jimmy, I was afraid he'd been murdered when I heard the shot. It's evident these two did it, and I know why. They tried to double-cross us. 
that he didn't get away with it. And neither will you. I arrest the two of you for murder in the name of the Queen. Later that day, Sergeant Preston went through the personal effects of Jason Black and found his copy of the grubstake agreement he had drawn up with Jimmy. He handed it to the boy. When Jason Black drew this contract, Jimmy, he planned that you should be the first to die. Now, Jimmy, the gold mine is yours. All yours, by the terms of that contract. Oh, golly, Smokey. I don't know what to do with a gold mine. You can have it if you want it. <laughs> After all, you found it. Oh, well, Jimmy, the mine's yours. Gee, but uh, maybe you need a good manager to run it for you. You know, I'd, I'd like that job. Golly. Will you really be my manager? You bet I will. Fact is, Jimmy, that was all arranged before today. I don't understand, Sergeant Preston. Well, after your father died, Smokey wrote me a letter and told me about it. He said he'd like to be appointed your legal guardian. That's right, Jimmy. The judge in Dawson took care of it. That's why King and I came up here today to tell you that until you're 21, Jimmy, Smokey Bates will take care of you. Oh, golly. That's like being my father, isn't it? Yes, Jimmy, it's about the same. And I'll try to be as good a man as your dad always was. Yes, King, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Yippee! Right on, cowboy! Yes, siree! Little wonder many a top-action Hollywood movie star goes for a breakfast of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot through and through with nut-like flavor. Pack a man-size taste wallop. Ah, they're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Remember, they come only in those famous big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you have the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case When Thief Catches Thief. When a United States Marshal came to Whitehorse to pick up a prisoner, I sensed that something was wrong, but I didn't suspect the dangerous turn of events that took place when I joined them for the trip back to the border. Slick Hobbs arranged that King and I to be separated so that he could deal with us one at a time. And the deal Slick offered was death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, the feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice.